Amin, amin, amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Thank you, Nur Izzat Hakim, for the recitation of Dua just now. Okay, so now the program continues with the singing of the national anthem of both countries, starting with Indonesia Raya and followed by Negara Ku.
Next, we present the official song from both University of Erlanga and UITM. <laughs> Okay, uh, due to technical difficulties, we'll wait for a few few moments for the hymn from UITM to play.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, now it is time to get to the much anticipated opening. Next, 
I would like to invite Vice Dean the Third, Faculty of Science and Technology, Arlanga University, to give a welcoming speech. Please welcome Dr. Fatmawati, MSE. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, dear college and students. Let me express on behalf of the Faculty of Science and Technology, Universitas Erlangga, my warm welcome. It is my honor to announce the opening of the International Mobility Program between Bachelor in Information System Student Organization, Universitas Erlangga, and Bachelor in IT Society and Management Mathematics, University Technology Mara, Perlis. It is truly a learning experience that transcends uh, boundaries. Indeed, uh, the exchange of ideas, the fostering, fostering of understanding across culture, divide uh, of the essence. We are living in a time when the greatest challenges are the state factors are. More than ever, uh, our destinies are intertwined. More than ever, do we need knowledge and awareness of the threat and opportunities that lie ahead of us? Awareness, an important word indeed. You, our international students and future leaders know that awareness is prerequisite for action. For displacement is one of the major global challenges that future leaders will need to tackle. Another one is a sustainable challenge in the new normal era. When challenges that affect all of us are discussed, the few from as many as possible of us should be brought to the fore. Last but not least, I hope we will get advantage with this potential collaboration, an important aspect of international student mobility is to promote the overall internationalization of academic life and of the academic community. With this word, I declare the International Mobility Program open. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much to Dr. Fatma at the MSC for the welcoming speech. Ladies and gentlemen, let us warmly invite Rector of University Technology Mara to give a welcoming speech. Please welcome Prof. Dr. Haji Kuzer Haji Ismail. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Salam perlis Raja Berdaulat, Raja Berilmu, Negeri Sejahtera Perlis Maju. Salam UITM, Usaha Takwa Mulia, and a very good afternoon to all. Honorable Professor Technologist Dr. Mo Azlam Ishaq, Deputy Director of Academic Affairs, Dr. Ahmad Nizan Mawad Noor, the Deputy Director of Student Affairs, Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Shukur Sani Mahmoud Fauzi, the Deputy Director of Research Industry Network Committee and Alumni, and the co-founder of this program, Professor Dr. Mo Yasin, MSI, the Dean Faculty of Science and Technology, Ayalanga Universities, Dr. Fawati, MSI, Vice Dean, the Third Faculty of Science and Technology, Ayalanga University, Technologist Dr. Siti Zaleha Ahmad, the Head of Learning Center, Science and Technology, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because with his abundance, we were able to gather at this international mobility program organized by the BITS and Magnetics of UITM and in collaboration with HIMSI Ayalanga. I'm honored to be invited uh, to the first collaboration between UIT and police and also the Universitas Ailanga. First and foremost, allow me to express my appreciation 
for the presence of the all the VIPs as well as the panels and invited speakers, especially to the Honorable Professor Dr. Mo Yasin, MSI, the Dean of Faculty of Science and Technology, Ailanga University, uh, Dr. Fatmawati, MSI, Vice Dean, Faculty of Science and Technology, Ailanga University, Dr. Uh, Rimuljo Hendradi, SSI, uh, an information system study program coordinator, and Mr. Taufik ST, uh, MCOM, as advisor of HIMSI, who is willing to be with us today. And also, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the lineup of the program imp imp uh, implementers who have worked hard to organize and implement the program, which will last for two days, that involve students from both universities. And also, I was informed that this is the first program organized by the Association of Beats and Fanatics with the cooperation of HIM SI Ilanga University. A success, a very noble effort that has been made to create a bond between the students of UI Temporalis and also the University of Ilanga. Congratulations and well done, all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the objective of uh, implementing this program is to establish the relationship between Faculty of Science, Computer and Mathematics, UI Temporary students, and Ilanga University students, even online. In addition, it is also a great platform to be able to learn how other associations manage their organizations. And not to forget that uh, although this program, it can alleviate the burden of students in need by extending a little help to them. Uh, indeed, this program is of great value in the effort to form a balance between human being in terms of physical, spiritual, emotional, and also intellectual, in line with the philosophy of national education. The International Mobility Program not only to strengthen ties between both universities, but also through this program as well, students can see the various cultures that are practiced in each university. In other words, I hope that by practicing in this, uh, participating in this program, students will be able to make good use of their time and should also take advantage of the opportunity to interact with Ayalanga University by filling in the gaps in their agendas with activities that can give information to help students gain more knowledge. Dear students, uh, hopefully this international mobility program will not end here. My hope is that students will be able to see how the program's goal are uh, being met. And last but not least, I would like to express my sincere congratulations and appreciation to all parties involved in the, in the success of this International Mobility Program, especially to the program's founders and committee members who have collaborated and worked tirelessly, uh, tirelessly to ensure the program successful implementation. Uh, on this note, I would like to honor and pleasure uh, to, to declare the International Mobility Program open and a very thank you. I see you all. Have a nice interaction and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Haji Kuzair Haji Ismail, for the welcoming speech. And with that, the ceremony will officially take place. With the end of opening ceremony, I would like to invite all participants and VIP guests to open the camera for the, for the photo session with the VIP guests. Okay, you guys ready? One, two, three. Here for a second. Okay, one more. One, two, three. All right. Thank you to all VIP guests who are willing to spend time with us today. Deans, rectors, and decent ladies and gentlemen. Your present is utmost appreciated from us. Thank you. For the honorable guest deans, rectors, lecturer, lecturers, and other guests, you are welcome to leave the meeting if you prefer to do so.
Baik, bagi para tamu VIP undangan, dipersilakan untuk meninggalkan ruangan Zoom bila berkenan. Terima kasih. Okay, para tetamu yang dihormati, Anda boleh meninggalkan ruang meeting jika berkenan. Okay, thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you, yeah. Prof. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Sukor and also the committee. Waalaikumsalam, uh, Ibu Fatma. Terima kasih banyak. Yeah. Thank you. Selamat Selamat ya, semoga lancar. Ya. Yeah. Thank you. Ya, yeah, Silakan dilanjutkan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, let's begin our first session. Why don't we? Why don't we first witness the virtual visit to UN to UITM? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Welcome to University Technology Mara Police or in short UITMP. My name is Faranusha Zila, a student of UITMP and I will be your guide for today. Please take note that some of these videos were taken before the Conditional Movement Control Order, CMCO, so you may see some students in this video. UITMP is located at Aro Police. It is the second largest campus among all of the UITM in Malaysia. At first, as you can see here, this building is called as the Administration Building. This is where our important office located, such as the Rector and the Treasurer Office. This next two building is the Academic Affair or HEA, which is at the Al Farabi Building, and the Student Welfare or HEP. Now, let us travel into another building. This place is called as Sri Samara Hall, aka DSS. Let's take a look inside. All the big event is taking place in here, such as orientation, as shown here, or convocation ceremony. And here is some of the footage of our convocation where both students and parents were invited for the big day. Let's move on to the star complex. Here we have three buildings in total. One of it is used as the lecturer office. Star complex have both academic and labs for students. They also have two lecture theater or LT that can be used for any events or classes. At the main building, we have first and second floor. Some events were taking place at this open hall at the center of the star complex. All lecture spaces in UITMP are equipped with teaching and learning facilities such as whiteboard, economic chair, and table. In UITMP, we have two library, and here is the new one, and it is called as Dato Jafar Hassan Library. Here is the entrance. And this is the reception counter. In this library, they provide the student with three types of study spaces. This one here is the relaxing space. They also provide a 24-hour book drop and elevator that can take the student wherever they want, including here, which is another study space. And they also have a bridge that is connected in library. Here, you can see the conference room and another study space that can be used by all of the students. They also provide an audio technician room, utility room, and multimedia resource room. As a student, we also need to stay healthy and fit, so sport complex is a must. Here are some of the footage for the complex. This complex is equipped with running track, 
football field known as the stadium and a badminton court. This yellow building is the gymnasium. It is well equipped for students to use from 5 until 7 p.m. every day. The gym is equipped with different kind of equipment such as rowing bicycle, different weight of dumbbells and many more. This place is usually used by the sports student. They always use this place to do their activities or complete their assignment. Other than them, our UITMP football player also use this gym for their fitness exercises and training. This gym are also open to use for all of the other students in UITMP, but most of the time, it is usually dominated by the male student. After some tiring activities, we can take a rest at Student Forge or Anjung Siswa. Here is how the Anjung Siswa looks like. It will always be packed with students during lunch and after class at 5 p.m. There is an open space for the student and a bank. Our most name is Anur and many of our students call it SPI, which is a short form for Pusat Islam. This one here is the main entrance of the mosque. Since it's a place for Muslim, this mosque is facilitated with parking lots and a few gazebo. As we go inside, we can see a prayer space for both male and female students, staff and the visitors. An Al-Quran is also provided so the students, staff and visitor can use it anytime. We all know the most important place in campus is cafe. UITMP have three main cafeterias. They are known as Apple Cafe, Casina Cafe, and Manga Cafe. Last but not least, our dormitory. We have Dahlia and Casina for female students and Chengal for male students. That brings us to the end of our tour. I hope you guys enjoyed this visual trip and thank you for watching. Well, that was such an amazing video. Next, why don't we watch a virtual visit provided by Arlanga University. Hai, selamat datang di kampus Universitas Arlanga. Kali ini saya, Ranyo Putri Rahmadewati, akan menemani kalian jalan-jalan dari kampus A, B, C, hingga KSDKU dari Universitas Erlangga. Saya juga akan menyampaikan apa aja kontribusi UNER terhadap masyarakat dan perkembangan ilmu pengetahuan. Penasaran kan? Yuk ikutin aku terus! Oke, okay, sekarang saya sudah berada di kampus A Unair. Di sini ada dua fakultas, teman-teman. Ada fakultas kedokteran dan fakultas kedokteran gigi. Berhubung kampus A ini memiliki fokus di bidang kesehatan, maka inovasi-inovasi yang tercipta pun nggak jauh-jauh dari hal kesehatan. Bahkan saat video ini diunggah pun, sebagian besar riset kesehatan difokuskan untuk memerangi pandemi COVID-19. Mulai dari riset untuk vaksin merah putih, penggunaan robot Raisa hasil kolaborasi dengan ITS Surabaya di rumah sakit UNAIR, penemuan prototipe reusable masker N95. Dan masih banyak lagi sebetulnya. Gak perlu lama-lama, sekarang saya udah berada di kampus B yang lokasinya gak jauh dari kampus A tadi. Lokasi saya berdiri kali ini dikenal dengan lingkungan sosial Yumaniora, karena memang sebagian besar dari tujuh fakultas yang ada di sini memiliki basis SOSFUM. Berbeda dengan civitas kampus A yang berinovasi pada bidang kesehatan, kampus B berinovasi pada bidang startup. Pertama ada Relief, aplikasi konseling online, kemudian Jaria, Ekonusa, merupakan aplikasi pengelolaan dokumen, serta Legal Hub, aplikasi dengan layanan kesejahteraan hukum. Dan masih banyak lagi lainnya. Oke, okay, sekarang saya sudah berada di kampus C Universitas Erlangga, Pusat Administrasi dan Saintek dari UNAI. Di sini total juga ada tujuh fakultas dan semuanya berbasis sains dan teknologi. 
Sebetulnya, Universitas Erlangga tidak hanya fokus kepada ilmu pengetahuan saja, namun kepada kebermanfaatan masyarakat sekitar juga. Maka, keberadaan lift dan tangga khusus di pabel ini sudah pasti bisa menjawab hal tersebut. Oke, terakhir saya masih ada di Mini Forest Kampus CU Nair. Namun, saya akan tetap menyampaikan perihal PSDKU atau Program Studi di luar kampus utama. Unair memiliki tiga kampus PSDKU yang tersebar di Jawa Timur yaitu di Kabupaten Lamongan, Gersik, dan Banyuwangi. Oke, itu tadi jalan-jalan di Unair hari ini. Semoga mengobati kerinduan teman-teman. See you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, that's such an amazing video of Elanga University. I uh, know, right? The videos by both universities are very cool. And so we just witnessed a very attractive environment and captivating place from both universities. And the next agenda of the program continues with the cultural exchange sessions. This session will be conducted by speakers from Indonesia and Malaysia as well. Remember to pay attention as this session might relate to other sessions during our program. Now let's welcome our speaker from Indonesia, Dimas Renggana, to continue with this session. Okay, thank you very much for the Master of Ceremony, for the chances you give to me. First of all, uh, maybe the slide can be slided. Yep. Under my slide, please. Okay, thank you very much, Fatiha. First of all, guys, uh, before we continue our presentation any further, I would like to uh, introduce myself first. My name is Christian Dimas Regana, but you guys can call me as Dimas. Just call me Dimas uh, if you meet me anyone at any time. Today, I would like to present it to you guys all about the Universitas Erlangga. So we're not going to discuss about uh, the culture in Indonesia anymore, but we will discuss about the culture in Universitas Erlangga. Because I think you guys can just search about the culture of Indonesia in YouTube or Google and you will get 1,000 results, I think. So I will not discuss about culture of Indonesia anymore. Okay, but before we continue again, I would like to give you some intermezzo first, uh, specifically for the UITM friends. Today in Indonesia, we celebrate one of our culture national day, Batik national day, uh, and I use it as my dress code today, but it, I, I bet you guys can see the pattern in my shirt because it is a white shirt. But today we have one of our culture national day, Batik. I think you guys already get the information uh, before I tell you about uh, Batik. But yeah, I will not uh, explain about Batik or the culture of Indonesia. Let's get to the next slide. Oh yeah, I want to give you some disclaimer first, guys. I would like to very sorry if my English is not that good, maybe uh, uh, because I still learn English uh, continuously and my English is not that fluent. So maybe saya cakap sikit-sikit gunakan bahasa Melayu lah ya, supaya kita bisa sama-sama mengerti gitu. Oke, okay, okay, very much. Uh, so today's agenda. I hope by the end of the session, we all can understand about our university, Universitas Erlangga, and our faculty, Faculty of Science and Technology. We also can understand about our program me from Universitas Erlangga, Information System Program me, and of course, about our student association, our organization, HIMSI. Okay, let's go to the next slide. First of all, I would like to discuss about our university first. Uh, maybe you guys already know the uh, the description about our university from the virtual visit UNER that the video has been displayed by, uh, to you guys before. Yep, but I want to tell you guys that Universitas Erlangga, it's not just an ordinary university. That's the first thing that I want to tell you guys about. Maybe you guys uh, ask me, why is not an ordinary university? Uh, I already give you some point in the slide why is Universitas Erlangga not, is not just, just an ordinary university. First of all, Erlangga University, or we can uh, call it UNER. I will, I will call it as UNER in the next space when I tell you about Universitas Erlangga, because it's too long if I always speak 
Karena gue university is university of Selangga, I will just call it UNER. Basically, UNER is the second oldest university in Indonesia because the first oldest university in Indonesia is, of course, University of Indonesia, or in Indonesia, we call it as Universitas Indonesia. And also a public university located located in Surabaya is Jakarta. So we basically located in Surabaya, uh, specifically in Jawa Timur, Indonesia. Now, Universitas Erlangga has 15 faculties with more than 35,000 students during the 2015 until 2016 academic year. And we also have 1,570 faculty members, including the staff and all the teacher that we have. Basically, you guys also can see in our video before that our campus is separated into three campus, uh, which is called Campus A, Campus B, and Campus C. Why it is separated into three campus? Because the in its campus, they have uh, their own faculty there. If we talk about the Campus A, or we call, or we call it Campus A in Indonesia, uh, we are going to discuss about the faculty in medical things. If we talk about the B campus or campus B, we're gonna talk about the social faculty. And if we talk about the C campus or campus C, we will gonna talk about the science things, science faculties. The next point why University of Erlangga is not just an ordinary university is because we consistently ranked highly in major world university rankings, which is University of Erlangga has long been considered as one of the big five universities in Indonesia. And for this year, We are ranked on the fourth best university in Indonesia, along with the Universitas Gajah Mada, Universitas Indonesia, and Institut Teknologi Bandung. If we talk about uh, Universitas Erlangga in Indonesia, we are ranked fourth. And if we go any further into the worldwide, then today we are in the 465 world class university based on the KS World University ranking. So. Yep, uh, University of Erlangga is grown up so so uh, fast in pace because when I entered University of Erlangga at 2019, University of Erlangga is still at around 651 until 700 in WCU. And today we already at 465 WCU based on KS World Ranking. Okay, if you guys want to know more about Universitas Erlangga, you guys just can go visit our website at uner.ac.id or you can contact us at email adm at pih.uner.ac.id or you can just visit us offline. Okay, maybe when the pandemic ends, I think because now the pandemic is still going, you guys can just visit us offline at Jalan Erlangga number 426, Erlangga, Gubeng, Surabaya, Jawa Timur, Indonesia. We we hope uh, we we all of us can meet offline someday and somehow. Okay, uh, I hope that pandemic and someday I hope pandemic already ends so we can meet offline. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, I already mentioned it before that in University of Angga we have 15 faculties, but in the beside the 15 faculties we also has two another. Uh, another education faculties. The 50 faculties, as you can see, is included as Faculty of Medicine, Dental Medicine, Law, Economics and Business, Pharmacy, Veterinary Medicine, Social and Political Sciences, Faculty of Science and Technology, uh, which is our faculty that I will give you the explanation later, Faculty of Science and Technology. Uh, and we have also Faculty of Public Health, Psychology, Humanities, Nursing, Research and Marine Sciences, Professional Studies, and our new faculty that just being open uh, around at 2020, uh, Faculty of Advanced Technology and Multidiscipline. This is a very new faculty that we just opened uh, at the last year. The two other is uh, the postgraduate school, which is, uh, yeah, of course, it, uh, it was facilitated to the student that want to have the uh, continued after the after they finish the their uh, educational thing at the, the faculty so we have also postgraduate school and the last one here we also have PSDKU Banyuwangi which is uh, the branch of Universitas Erlangga at Banyuwangi basically Universitas Erlangga is located at Surabaya but we also have a campus in Banyuwangi that called PSDKU Banyuwangi Okay, that's about our faculty. 
maybe things like this. Okay, next slide. I would like to tell you guys about the university system, the system that help us uh, students and also teacher to collaborate at educational thing and also administrative thing. Uh, the first system I would like to tell you guys is about the e-learning system that we have. Our e-learning system is called Hebat, the e-learning .id. You guys can just uh, visit it manually by typing in your website or browser, uh, hebat.learning.uner.ac.id. You can just visit it manually. This is the display when you guys uh, log in into the system. In this system, student and teacher uh, do some educational things such as like setting the assignment for students, uh, setting the attendance for students, and so others. While in the student's perspective, uh, the students can add the submission for the assignment. The student also can do the attendance thing. And the student also can read about the topic that they have discussed uh, while they do the virtual meeting with the Zoom. OK, that's the first system. The first system is facilitating the educational things. This is the system, the e-learning system. The next system is, OK, the next system is Cyber Campus Universitas Alangga. That my face uh, just don't recognize it. Uh, that is a bad face because I was start at when the photo is taken. Uh, so this is the second system. The system is about Cyber Campus Universitas Alangga. Well, if we talk about the e-learning habit, .id, we talk about the educational thing. While we, well, if we talk about the cyber campus universitas Alangga, then we talk about the, uh, the administrative thing. So basically, cyber campus facilitating the administrative thing uh, for the students and also the teachers in this system, the cyber campus system. Uh, from the student's perspective, they can uh, do the payment for the, their school fee. They also can check their grade in every subject. They also can uh, set the, the, the study plan uh, for one semester. And they can also check the academic calendar and others. This system is very helpful for the administrative team while in the uh, teacher's perspective, it also help their administrative team also. Okay, that's the second system. Maybe we just go to the third system, the last system. Okay, the last system is about uh, our meeting system. So basically, uh, when the pandemic come over, uh, we used to uh, join Zoom. Uh, we use Zoom as our virtual meeting platform. So uh, we basically use Zoom and uh, type ID and password manually in the Zoom uh, meeting application or the teacher itself, uh, the teacher itself uh, share the link to the meeting manually. So we, uh, we share this conventionally, but after some times, uh, Unifras Erlangga go with a new innovation. They made a website system. So the, uh, basically the student and teacher, both of them can just join the Zoom or the class by just visiting the website which is fst.unerdipace.id slash meeting. They can just visit the website, login into it, and they can uh, read the schedule of their class. Uh, if the class is not open yet, then it will show the yellow button where, where you can see in the slide, there is a yellow button in the right, uh, in the top right. Uh, it said the class belum dibuka. It means the class is not open yet. Uh, but the class will open five minutes before the class was being held. For example, if the class is being held uh, at 7 a.m., the five minutes before 7 a.m., the class will open. So the student and teacher just can click the button and it will automatically uh, assign you to the Zoom meeting application. So basically, it's that simple. Uh, this is a new innovation, which is, I think, very helpful for us because we uh, we're not going to do it conventionally again. This is a good innovation from our university. That's about the university system. In the next slide, I would like to discuss about our faculty, the Faculty of Science and Technology. I will not uh, explain it uh, very, very detailed, but I will just explain it, uh, the description and 
uh, the overall faculty. So basically, our faculty consists of four departments. There is there are just four departments, which is include uh, physics, mathematics, biology, and chemistry. Okay. Uh, basically, you guys can conclude that not each programming has their own departments. So the the department is only four, and the programming is uh, R eight. Uh, so basically, not every programming has their own department. Uh, for example, our programming information system was included at the Department of Mathematics. So we're not we're not having uh, our own departments, but we included in Department of Math Mathematics. Why is it? Because I think the Faculty of Science and Technology thinks that uh, the mathematics is linearly with the information system, so they can facilitate our programming already. Okay, the next thing, we are consist of eight programming, so eight main programming, May I revisit that. Uh, it include biology, chemistry, mathematics, physics, statistics, biomedical engineering, and for is our programming information system. Beside the Eggman programming, we also facilitated the master programming and also the doctor programming, which is biology master, chemistry master, biomedical engineering master, and mathematics and natural science doctor. So we totally have, uh, I think we have 14 programming, but we just conclude that we have Eggman programming. The next one, uh, we consist of 2,933 students, which is, uh, that was a uh, many students. We have uh, the 2,933 uh, 2, students uh, included at 244 for statistics, 255 for biomedical engineering, 491 for mathematics, 400 for physics, 302 for information system, 248 for environmental, 423 for biology, 420 for chemistry, 98 master, and 52 for doctoral. Uh, we can conclude that mathematics is the has the most many students in uh, our faculty. I don't have any idea. Maybe the Indonesian people love mathematics, I think. Maybe they just want to do some research with mathematics and others. Okay, next slide. Okay, so I'm not gonna discuss about our faculty any further. You guys just can visit our website fst.unar.ac.id if you want to know more about our faculty. The next thing I want to discuss is about our student organization inside our faculty. I will not tell you guys about the university scope student organization, but I just discuss about the faculty scope, scope of student organization. The first student organization inside our faculty is BEM, called BEM. In English, we call it, maybe we call it as Executive Student Council. Like you guys already know, if we talk about the Executive Student Council, then the main job is uh, about the executive job, which is uh, the student organization supervise all executive function within the faculty. They collaborate with another uh, organization uh, to make sure that the faculty executive things work properly. The next student organization we have is BLM. In English, we call it Student Representative Council. While the BEM, while the BEM is uh, uh, responsible for the executive things, then the BLM is responsible for the legislative things. So they basically uh, made some regulation or they uh, responsible for the legislative thing at the faculty level. Uh, basically, they just represent the students of our faculty. So if the student have some aspiration, then they will tell BLM to uh, forward it into the BEM and BEM will forward it into the stakeholder of our faculty. Okay, the next organization we have is HIMA. HIMA in English, I think it called Students Association, which is it is our organization, HIMSI. HIMSI is one of the HIMA inside our faculty, one of the student association. I think the, the job of HIMA and them basically is similar, but the biggest difference the, between it is just the scope. 
if the BEM scope is uh, the faculty one, the faculty level, then the HEMA or student association scope was at the programming level. So basically, if we have Eggman programming in our faculty, then we also have Egg student association also. The student association will organize and facilitate the need of student in its programming. Basically, it's just the same with BEM, but the biggest difference is the scope. The last organization we have called BESO. In English, we call it semi-autonomous institution. This student organization help to coach and develop students' ability in certain field. I give you the example. For example, we have a BESO called format. This BSO or semi-autonomous institution help the student that have an ability in journalistic field. So they can learn more about journalistic uh, in format, they can develop that ability. We also have another example. Uh, we have a BSO called Beta. This BSO help the student that has uh, entrepreneurship ability uh, so they coach and develop that entrepreneurship ability at beta. We we have another uh, BSO, I think, but I can uh, but I can just explain it one by one because I have a limitation in my time. Okay, maybe next slide. That's all about our student organization. Okay, next slide. Uh, the last thing I want to discuss about is about our student association, which is HIMSI. Uh, HIMSI is one of the student association uh, at our faculty, Faculty of Science and Technology, which is our organization. I think some of you guys already know that Halim, Halim Bildanawal Rahman, which is will be presenting something uh, after my race. Uh, he is the leader of the HIMSI, our student association. Basically, HIMSI is the organization that will handle the event advocacy and all the need of information system programming students. HIMC itself was born on November 26, 2015. And this year, uh, HIMC led by Halim Wildan Awal Rahman from information system year 2019 and bring a cabinet that called Chakrawala. I think Chakrawala in English called Horizon. But what is an, what, why is it Chakrawala or Horizon? I will discuss about it later. Okay, maybe next slide. Okay, okay. This this slide was special. With uh, for the HIMSI slide, I made it special because it's our student association. So basically, I made it special. Yep. Uh, first of all, I would like to explain you guys about our logo, our cabinet logo. You guys can see the video, right? That is our logo. In our logo, there are several parts that uh, several part also has uh, also represent something from it. Like the birds represent freedom and courage to explore many things. The wings represent sky and to see things in many directions. The orange color and its gradient represent courage, passion, and spirit to drive forward, take risks, and face new challenges. Six pair of things represent the six HIMC administrative. You guys already know that HIMC was born at 2015, so it is already 2020, so it's the sixth MC administrative. And the last one about the blue color and its gradient represents sky, wisdom, justice, and freedom of expression. Okay, that's all from our logo. Next slide. Okay, so in the next slide, I would like to discuss about the department uh, in HIMSI. But beside the department, we also have head government, BPH. We call it Indonesian BPH, as BPH, Badan Pengurus Harian. But we call it in English, head government. Head government include the chairman. Uh, you guys can see the Halim face there. The, he's the chairman. We also have a vice chairman called Hafiz, secretary one called Intan, secretary two called Ima, I think, treasurer one called Erma, and treasurer two called Amel. The main job of this head government is to make sure that HIMSI runs smoothly and all the department inside it can well collaborate with each other. That's basically uh, all head government's job, I think. 
Okay, next slide. We will discuss about the department in Hinsi. Okay, next slide. Okay, basically beside the head government, Hinsi has seven another department, which is the uh, responsible for their main job. The first department is academic and achievement. I think you guys can, uh, you guys already know what is the main job from their name, their its name. So basically, academic and achievement will be responsible for the academic thing. Entrepreneurship and inventory will be responsible for the entrepreneurship thing. Human resource and development will also re uh, uh, responsible for the development of human resource, the media and creative content responsible for the media and creative content things, public relation responsible for the relation between him, she, and another stakeholder, research and technology will be uh, responsible for our, for our website because we have a website, you know, so you guys can visit it later. Research and technology is the one that developed that website. And the last one is sports and artistry, which is uh, responsible for facilitating the students' sport and artistry field. Okay, uh, in the next slide, I would like to discuss. In the next slide, I would like to discuss about the event that being held uh, in its department. I think I just pick one of the event for its department because if we explain it one by one, I think oh, there are so many events in Himsi that I can't explain it by one by one. The first event from academic and achievement department called Conference of Champion, which is to facilitate uh, uh, for the TMC student, uh, for the information system programming student that want to uh, win some competition. So this Conference of Champion, uh, we invite some speaker to give us or tell us the, their experiences about winning some competition. So basically it's just a uh, uh, sharing from some speaker to uh, to give us some courage to join some competition and tell us the tips and tricks how to win it. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is uh, one of the uh, agenda that we have in entrepreneurship and inventory department so this is our uh, organization jacket guys so this is himsi's jacket jacket uh, the one that responsible for making this jacket is entrepreneurship and inventory department basically it's that uh, the the one that responsible for make, making this jacket okay uh, next slide Okay, next one is the Human Resources Development Department. This is one of the agenda that being held in this department called ULTAH. So ULTAH is basically uh, the agenda to celebrate every HIMSI member when they celebrate their birthday, birthday event. So when there are one of the HIMSI member uh, celebrate birthday then human resource development department will celebrate it together with another himsis member like uh, saying congratulations and uh, hoping for some peace okay next slide okay the media and creative content agenda uh, basically the media and creative content will be responsible for uh, taking care with our social media such as instagram official account offline and uh, another social media so basically they if if you guys visit our instagram next, uh, after this all of the content inside it was being made by this department media and creative content so they they are the designer of the social media basically okay maybe next slide Okay, the next slide is about the public relations department. This is one of the event that being held by public relations department called Appreciasi Wisuda Himsi Unair. Basically, basically, if uh, one of our students already finished the educational things in our program, they are going to uh, another level of life. Then before they are going to another level of life, we do some appreciation things to congratulate them, to hoping for uh, their successful life and others. So basically, this is the event for doing it from the public relations department. 
Okay, maybe next slide. Okay, next slide about research and technology department. Uh, the event called job experience sharing. This is basically uh, one of our facilitation uh, for our student in information system programming who want to know about what we can do after we finish our educational things. So basically it's about uh, the job experience sharing from our alumni. Uh, uh, we we sometimes invite our uh, several alumni to tell us and share their experiences in the job field. Okay, that's the uh, event that they held by the research and technology department. Next slide. This is the sport and artistry department. They have an event called Seralik. Maybe you guys similar. Uh, you guys know about the game. In this picture, I think you guys already know, right? Uh, PUBG Mobile, Valorant, Mobile Legends. I think it also has some uh, name in Malaysia also because uh, I sometimes watch the Mobile Legends competition at Malaysia because they uh, also held some event about Mobile Legends competition and also PUBG Mobile and also Valorant event. I think you guys already know about this game. Yeah, basically, Sierra League is the competition for our students to compete uh, between this game. So basically, it's just for fun. So we're not just going to be serious uh, after all. It's just for fun to uh, entertain ourselves. OK, that's from Sarah. The next department will be. OK, that's all, I think. OK, so I already explained all seven departments that was uh, inside the HIMSI UNER. So if you guys want to know about our organization, our student association, HIMSI, furthermore, you guys can follow our social media uh, at Instagram, at HIMSI UNER, line, you, can, you guys can add the ID or subscribe our YouTube, HIMSI UNER, or you, guys, or you guys can visit our website. This website basically developed by our member, by their uh, research and technology department, himsiuner.com. You guys can check it. It's a good website uh, developed by our our own member, and you guys can also uh, check our link in uh, in that link. Basically, that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much for the chances that are given to me. It's such an honor for me to have this chance for presentation uh, presented about my university, my student association, and also my faculty to you guys in Malaysia. So once more, I would like to say sorry if maybe I do some mistake or maybe my English is bad and not that fluent. Uh, I'm so sorry. I hope that you guys can understand my English even though it's not that fluent. That's all for me. Thank you very much. And I will give the chance back to the Master of Ceremony. Thank you very much, guys. All right, thank you so much, Dimas Vengana, for this exciting new information. Next, let us welcome our speaker from Malaysia, Muhammad Nur Hakimi, to talk on this session. Assalamualaikum and very good evening to the honorable guests, ladies, and gentlemen. Before I begin my talk, let me say thank you to Dimas for the marvelous presentation about their university. So now, let we begin. Next slide. Okay, and also next slide. All right. So for I, before I begin my talk, let me introduce myself. Myself is Muhammad Nohakimi. I am from committee member of BITS organization in UITM Arau. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about UITM Arau. University of Technology Mara Chawangan Police is one of the branch campus of Technology Mara located in Arau Police Malaysia. It was established in 1974 at Kanga, making it as the third the oldest UITM campus in the whole country. In 1980, the campus moved to their permanent location that is in Arau. That's a little bit of our history of UITM Arau. Next slide. 
Okay, in UITM RRAW, there has there are seven there are seven faculties. There is faculty of accountancy, faculty of applied science, faculty of management, faculty of sports science and recreation, faculty of plantation and agro technology, faculty of computer and mathematical science, and lastly faculty of architecture planning and surveying. Next slide. Okay, the, as, as the audience can see on the screen, this is the two organizations that collab with UniAir. The first organization in UI, the first organization is BIS, that is known as Bachelor in IT Society. And the second organization is Manetic, that is Management of Mathematics. And both of these organizations are under Faculty of Computer and Mathematical Science. For the BIS, for the BIS president is Saudara Afiq Zakwan and the Manetics president are Nur Hidayat. Next slide. Okay. As you guys, as the audience can see on the screen, this is the position in our organization. The first is chairman, assist by the two. Two person, that is vice chairman one, vice chairman two. Followed by secretary one and secretary two. <laughs> Lastly, treasurer. Next slide. All right. For this for this section, I will tell you tell the audience a little bit of our manifesto that our that our candidate do. Next slide. First of all, this is this is a first example of our of our manifesto. As the audience can see on the screen, our candidate make a photo of himself and tell and tell he and tell the name and the position that he compete for. By doing this, the student will know who will compete for this position and how was it look. Next example. The next example for manifesto section is the candidate list all the experience all of the experience on the certain on the certain part to get to gain the student trust and also to gain the student votes next slide and the, and also another example of the manifesto manifesto is the candidate will will share what they think that they, they are going to do if they get the position because by doing this the, the student can get to know what are the reason or why the student would choose this candidate as the as the president next slide okay right now as the audience can see this is a former attire for magnetics members and this former attire are used during a big event such as annual grand meetings next slide then the next slide is about our bonding time our organization bonding time in uitm the first uh the first example of our bonding time is fskm run 3.0 that have been joined by may, many staff and also many students to and this event was a big event in our university. And the second example is these are the these are the example of the stretching that need to be done before the event was start. Next slide. The next example, the next example of our bonding time is committee member meetings. As the audience can see on the screen, the committee member meeting having a photo session after during a big event to put as their mem to put in their memory slide the next is family days organized by magnetics committee members by doing this they would like they will get a chance to know each other even more and make their bonding grow even bigger next slide Okay, for this part is grooming session by big organization. 
this grooming session was incentive by the former president of our bits organization by the reason he doing this because he want to get to know the selected people who will who, who join the bits organization and expose them on how to run bits organization smooth and want us to get each other when want us to get to know each other even more next slide For this part is Beats Movie Night. Beats Movie Night was initiative for, uh, was held in every Saturday night by Beats organization by because you want to get to know. Next slide. Uh, for the next part is I wish tells to the audience a little a few of our system in UITM. Let me see the first system. The first system is Digital Library. Digital Library is an online platform where students can find any books, catalogs or journal that are related to their studies. As the audience can see on the screen, in Digital Library, we have the online database, ebook that where students can find their books or UQPS, that is, students also can find past year final paper to study uh, or to get to know what is the example answer that will that would like to show up. Next slide. The next example of our system is also the same, is in uh, digital libraries. This example of student can assess the current subject that, that they would like to find and find the info about the subject or the MOOC or the books or the journal about the subjects or, and to gain their knowledge. Next slide. The next system is student portal. Student portal are online platform that are related to student details. And also the advantage about the student portal is as the audience can see, the student also also have a link that is e academic system, e help system, student financial service, appear for continuing study, digital library, or you future. By clicking one of any this link, it will direct it will direct it to the website and without student having to search for it. The next system. Okay, for the third system is you future. You future is an online e-learning platform that is special special for student UITMs. Inside this you future, student can get to student can get to know what are the current what are the costs that are the, what are the costs that are the, uh, that they are taking for, and also inside this you future, the lecturer also will assign an assignment for student to, to, to work on and student also can answer the final question, final paper on you future. Next slide. The next slide is eHelp or known as Hal Ewal Plaja. Hal eHelp is an online platform that related to any student affair. Next slide. And the next is e-academic. E-academic is an online platform for students to, to register their course and also for students to check their examination result in the end of their semester. Next slide. The, the another system is in, in UITM is Busari UITM. Busari UITM is an online platform that related to student fees, college fee, and also if some of the student broke the rules or like damage the property of the UITM, the, the student also can check the amount that he or she has to pay. Next slide. This, this section also related to Bustari UITM. As the audience can see, in Busari ATM also we have also we have also the receipt the student can get the receipt of their of their of their paying and the 
structure fees. Next slide. That's all. Uh, that's all. I would like to show you a little bit and few of our system and our culture. And also, I am so sorry about uh, the inconvenience and also about my my speak, English speaking. That's all for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nor Hakimi, for the wonderful yet knowledgeable session. I hope all of you enjoy the cultural exchange from both university just now and able to grab some new knowledge from it. Okay, uh, I have a gender reminder for the 100 participants who took part on the second day. You are required to do a slide presentation which will be presented tomorrow at 2.05 p.m. Indonesian time and 3.05 p.m. Malaysian time. Participants also need to set your leadership slide presentation name with group number underscore your organization, organization name that are shown on the slide. For example, G2 underscore Apple. In addition, you are also advised to listen carefully to the leadership talk slot, which will begin shortly. This is because what is told in the leadership talk slot will be used in the slide presentation. On the other hand, in your slide presentation, you need to include your organization name and logo, vision and mission, organization structure, and also interesting program to be done in your organization. The three presidents will pick randomly some groups to present in the leadership group presentation session. I hope all the, all the participants take note on it. All right, so thank you guys for staying with us today. Today's program continues with the leadership talk slot where each association leader will tell a little bit about the greatness and privilege of organizational management. Now, I would like to welcome President of HIMSI, Airlangga University to give some talk. Please welcome Halim Wildan Aul Rahman. Okay, uh, thank you, MC. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, Mas. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. Uh, the Honorable Vice Dean, third of uh, Faculty of Science and Technology, Universitas Airlangga, uh, Dr. Fatmawati MSI, also Director of UITM Arau, Professor Dr. Haji Khuzir Haji Ismail, and uh, the other honorable guests that are coming to our meeting today. So in this section, I would like to share a little bit about my leadership talk. And we are going to talk about the function of organization, uh, the logo, vision and mission, and also the roles of department. Without further ado, uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, first of all, I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Halim Wildanawalu Rahman, or you can just call me Halim. And I'm from uh, Himpunan Mahasiswa S1 Sistem Informasi Universitas Airlangga, or you can just call our, our organization as HIMC. As Dimas already mentioned before, that our organization is actually the student association or a student body of our study program. So uh, in, in Universitas Airlangga, we have uh, the Faculty of Science and Technology. And inside the Faculty of Science and Technology, we have uh, eight uh, different study programs. And HIMSI is one of the student association that represent one of the study program, which is information system in Universitas Airlangga. Okay, there is our logo. Uh, okay, go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, as I've already mentioned to you, uh, and maybe you have also heard from Dimas, this is uh, the organization that represents the uh, information system study program. And uh, HIMSI actually was found in, in 26 November to 2015. And this year is the sixth year of HIMSI. And on this occasion, on this year, uh, we are using the, the, the name of the administration under the name of Chakrawala, which means sky, uh, or the area above the earth. We have uh, the philosophy uh, or we have the meaning inside the 
the name of our administration, which it means that we want to achieve the highest level, the highest possibility of achievements. And we also want to create a lot of collaborations with a lot of people. And actually, this event is the first international event that has been held by Himsi Uner. So applause for Himsi Uner and Manatix also beats. Uh, applause for everyone. Applause for the committee and for everyone that are contributing to our uh, meeting today. Okay, uh, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, uh, this is uh, our cabinet or our administration logo. You know, for uh, if there is an organization, then usually uh, each time they change their president or they change their leader, they will change also their cabinet name. And this is uh, our cabinet. Uh, Kabinet Cakrawala, which means sky, and I've already mentioned to you the the the, the philosophy uh, behind it. And there is some note for you guys, especially for your preparation for the presentation for tomorrow. Uh, in order to create a good logo, yeah, Cakrawala. Oh, that's how you spell it in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, in order to create a good logo to represent your organization, you have to remember some of. Uh, uh, you have to remember some of the thing that is important. The first one is you have to find the meaning. As this slide shows, uh, this is not just a picture, but it actually has some meanings to every part, every single part of it. So if you want to create a logo, you have to find the meaning for each part that you created. The second one is it should re relate to your vision and also your mission. As we have already mentioned to you, uh, Cakrawala means sky. So in order to represent Cakrawala, we use uh, wings and also the birds. So it has some kind of relation to it. So it has, uh, it has, it has a good connection to our organization that we represent. And uh, the third one is... It's actually your identity, you, so, so you, you have to be proud of it. And the fourth one that you have to remember is that it doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to make it special only to yourself. So this is our logo, Kabine Cakrawala, and you can see all the meanings that already included. So if you guys have the assignments to create a logo for your uh, imaginative organization, that is what you should remember. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is our vision and also mission. Uh, I have some notes if you guys want to make a vision and mission. Uh, our vision, as you can see, is for the aspiration, communication, and also the exploration uh, part of our uh, students in the information system study program. And so to achieve that mission, to achieve that vision, we have three missions in which one, uh, in, in, in the number one, we have uh, we want to store the aspiration that our students have. And the second one, we also want to uh, develop, we want to expand our culture and innovation inside our organization and which you will see uh, later on the slides. And the third one is we want to provide the place for exploration for our students so that they can learn uh, both in academic matter or in uh, non-academic matter. Like if they want to create a podcast, if they want to play uh, online games, we have the competition for that. So uh, it, it will make the, the direction of uh, the the vision of our students better so that's uh that's the vision and mission and for the vision and mission i have some notes uh let's go back to the previous slide <laughs> okay for the vision and mission i have some notes uh first of one for vision you guys have to make it simple don't make it complicated make it simple make it relatable make it easy and the second one is make it smart and futuristic because vision is a long-term goal of your organization. So you might not achieve your vision in a short amount of time. You have to wait for like a year, maybe two years, three years, according to your organization's period. So you have to make it a long-term goals. And in order to achieve your vision, you have to create your mission. So mission is how you will achieve your vision. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, there are many tools available to help you to help you write a mission or vision statement. But I think it's often best to keep it simple, one or two sentences, and describe why the business exists. Right? 
what is the core value or the daily purpose, write it down and share it with everyone. That is a good quote from Joanna Maisless. Okay, so that is one inspiration for you guys to absorb, to, to implement on your assignments. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we have seven departments in our organization. We have academic and achievements, entrepreneurship and inventory, human resource and development, media and creative content, public relations, uh, research and technology, and sports and artist artistry. So the reason why we divide our departments into seven uh, is because there is our need and there is our requirement. You know, for every reason of the division of your uh, departments, you have to have some good reason. For example, the academic and achievements, we want to have the departments because we want to improve our students' uh, academic matters, you know, to, to give them assistance in their homework, to give them assistance in the materials, to give them assistance to get through the semester. We want to create the exact department for that exact matters. The same with entrepreneurship and inventory. If, we, if you want to make your students learn about how to make some goods, how to sell them, how to create these amazing jackets, uh, you can use this department, these exact departments that has their exact roles existing for your uh, organization and the third one if you want to if you want to organize your human resources for example you want to create a leadership training for them you want to create a uh, a bonding session with them so you want to create a departments that uh, especially or specifically will work on that matters so it's the same with the other departments uh it 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 it, it should have a the different jobs it should have the uh, the specific job for each one uh, like media and creative content so they will create uh, the creative content in our social media and public relations they will create some collaboration with any other organization be it inside our faculty our university or maybe uh, from the other organization outside the world and for research and technology as uh, my friend already explained to you we want to create a department that uh, specifically will do the development in technological thing. So we created a website in this department. So we also create some other uh, training. For example, we have uh, managed to create uh, UI UX bootcamp in our organization and we invited a lot of students from our faculty. So that's why this department exists. And for sports and artistry, you know, to have some fun, we created this one to, uh, to do the movie night, to create the esports league and to do another thing regarding to sports and also artistry. So you have to remember that the roles of departments or the structure, uh, what kind of departments that you want to have, it reflects to your need and requirement. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is the our organizational structure. We have the chairman or the president, and then we have the vice chairman or the vice president. We have the treasury secretary, and then we have the seven departments on the same level because they are doing their job on the same level. And some of the uh, some of the department even have special division uh, or special section that they want to dedicate to do the specific job inside their departments. Okay, so that is how you divide your organization. Uh, that is how we divide our organization. It's really up to you. Like I already mentioned to you, the structure reflects to your need and requirement. And this is what we need in our organization. So this is what we created for our organization, Himsi Uner. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, uh, this is another quote. Organizing is what you do before you do something so that when you do it, it is not all mixed up. Yeah, right? So you have to make it uh, specific. What, what is the job of this apartment? What, what is their duty? What is their events? What is their program? So that's your job as the, as the one who's going to have the assignments to create a fictional organization, okay? Because tomorrow you have to present it. So you have to learn a lot from this section. Okay, next slide. Ah, uh, this is uh, one of the example, one of the event that we created. Uh, Dimas already mentioned to you about this one, so I'm gonna skip. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is another event that we created. We have a photography contest, uh, which uh, our students will submit their photography 
uh, and they will tag our Instagram. You know, we 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 make a contest with using Instagram and our students, uh, students, you know, excitement on photography, students, uh, desires on photography. So they take a photo according to the specific uh, theme that we uh, decided every month, and then they will submit it through uh, Instagram. Okay. Okay, so this is one of the inspiration that maybe you guys can do with your fictional organization. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is our breakthrough. Breakthrough because uh, as we already mentioned to you that we wanted to create a new uh, culture and new innovation in our organization. So we are using Notion. For those of you who haven't... Uh, who haven't tried or you, you're not familiar with Notion, I think you guys should try this one because it's really helpful application uh, for organizing your meetings, organizing your events, organizing your proposal, and many other things. So we are using Notion to run our organization this year. Okay, let's go to the next slide because I only have like two minutes left. <laughs> Okay, and this is the 75 members of Himsi Uner. So in our organization, we have 75, the most dedicated students in our study program. Here you can see all their faces. They are, walk they are working tirelessly to try to create a very amazing event. You know, the, the, these are the men or these are, these are the people behind the screen of Himsi Uner. Cabinet Chakrawala. This is all of you guys. These are the people that I love so much and I love them dearly because of the next slide. An organization, no matter how well designed, is only as good as the people who live and work in it. So it doesn't matter how perfect is your structure. It doesn't matter how perfect is your vision. It doesn't matter how perfect is your logo. If you can't find the right people to work inside your organization, then it's not going to work. And I'm so glad and I'm so grateful that I have 75 amazing students, amazing people that work together with me inside HIMSI, inside our organization. So thank you for that, everyone. Thank you for that, kawan-kawan uh, HIMSI. Okay, so that's one, one thing that I will deliver. Okay, let's go to the next slide. I think that's it. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. Uh, this is our social media. You guys can follow us on the social media and see you guys later. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi well, like wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Mas Halim Wildan Al Rahman, for the inspiring and the great talk that you just gave. Okay, next, I would like to invite the president of BEAT to give some talk. Please welcome Afik Zafman. Hi everyone, to the honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, hi and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Afik Zakwan Biashir, you can call me Afik. So I am currently now the president of BEAT in Bachelor in IT and Bachelor in IT Society under the Faculty of Science, Computer and Mathematics. So now I will tell a, bit, a little bit about what I'm going to do. So I'm going to tell it uh, about this. I will present to you about the how the characteristic that you may have to be a leader. So from this leadership talk, you can see here from my leader, leadership experience, I got a lot through of leadership experience. Alhamdulillah from this. So jadi, uh, this is the part lihat uh, for your information in UITM there are three highest organization in UITM which is the sport committee the college committee and the student council so from there I have been through the sport I'm vice president of the sport I'm president chairman president of the highest committee so for that I learned so much of experience meeting with the executives UITM and so on so I'm going to share to you about what you need to do to be a leader. So, about my first point is, what's very important to be a leader? What makes different between a good leader and a normal leader? So, you can see here now, a good leader know how to manage the team. No, if any problem happen, they will solve it carefully, maturely. So, how they know how to solve it? 
this is by the experience so as if so for you guys you need to learn more experience when you handle some things so the experience is really a bit important if you guys make a mistake like i said i said so much at my team jika anda membuat satu kesalahan jangan risau saya takkan marah teruskan buat tapi anda belajar pada kesalahan yang anda buat itu akan jadikan anda seorang yang better person anda akan jadi lebih baik dan itu sangat penting so jadi my first point is uh, gain so much experience that will help you when you be a leader so my second point is about the vision mission and target so if you want if you want to be a leader you must have the vision vision and target why because when you with leader the target will push yourself to achieve it no matter what happen you will push yourself then you made a good leader from it so as myself when i bertanding untuk jawatan presiden untuk bis yang baru ni so apa yang saya targetkan adalah untuk kali ni adalah untuk merangkumi student-student SPSKM dari dua aspek iaitu aspek current semasa dan juga after selepas jadi apa yang kita boleh rangkumi dari aspek current and after so i will help them the student of faculty my faculty to cover this aspect from the program so what program that i that i will make so the program i will make is about the program that can help them like master the coding master the microsoft word excel and so on so why this is important because you can see here now in malaysia like say in malaysia when you going to interview the job kita akan lihat yang interviewer akan banyak bertanyakan soalan pada waktu sekarang our covid pandemic dia akan banyak bertanyakan soalan you have any basic it skill you have any basic it skill then if you have any basic it skill that will help you to get the job better so from that my target is to help my student to to they have the basic it skill to help to further the study and that will help them in the current study because you can see here when a student master the coding they can score the carry mark more more and they get the better result so as my third point adalah yang paling penting untuk kali ini so my third point is anda perlu implement the third point in the first place because what because it's really important so my third point is what makes a lion become a jungle become king of the jungle you can see here we call lion is king of jungle why is this the biggest one is this the strongest one no is not the biggest one it's the strongest one elephant is more the biggest one is more the strongest one then why is 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 the fastest one no cheetah is the faster one then why so anyone know the answer why lion we call it king of the jungle so i so okay it's okay i will proceed so why we call it king lion king lion is king of jungle this is because it's meant yes nurin thank you it's mentality it's strategy why because it's said it mentality is the greatest among us you can see on the tv when the lion approach the elephant who's run first you can see elephant will run first because elephant mentality although he's the big one the biggest one his mentality said that oh the king jungle come i need to run like that but the king but the lion mentality is different i'm the greatest i want to be the greatest and the best so this so that's what you need to do you have to to prepare your mentality you have to set your mentality to be the better one to be the great one so you can successful also in your life that's very important so you can see here in this slide about a program that i plan for bits for this semester like mastering coding mastering Microsoft and the spot event, balon tournament, and I also made the distress event like the movie night, innovative and creative. So, uh, next slide, please. So okay, I now I will tell you about the proposal and boransi. So now from the UITM, yeah, you can see the content proposal. This this eight criteria I might have in the every proposal. 
So you can see how here the purpose of the program, the objective, every all of this might have, and the borancy. So what is borancy? Borancy is the guideline form for the budget the request. So the budget has already in the borancy, you have to tick it, and for the approval, you have to stick it together and send it to the our Hal Ewa Plaza for it. So I think that's it for me. So my point is you have to learn from your experience, get so much experience. If you make mistake, it's okay, but don't repeat this, the same mistake. And the second point is your vision, your mission and your target. Make sure you have the vision, mission and target to achieve what you want to know. And the others, the last point is mentality. You have to set your mentality to be the greatest among all, be a good guy. And I know all of you can do it. So this is from me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rafiq Zakran, for the inspiring talk. Next, I would like to welcome the presidents of Manetics. Please welcome Muhammad Nur Hidayat. All right. Assalamualaikum and hello, everyone. Thank you for the post MC for today. Um, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Muhammad Nur Hidayat bin Muhammad Taladi, um, the president of Manetics. I am glad that you guys can join our program today. Okay, first of all, I will explain all my experience in leadership. So as you guys can see, I started my leadership since I was um, high school in 2016. I joined an interview for a student cooperative uh, committee in Matap Rendah Sains Mara Lembong. And luckily I got in and automatically I was appointed as the president. At the same time, since I was the president of a student cooperative uh, committee, I had to join the student representative council as the uh, entrepreneurship at school for two years. From there, I had uh, a lot of studies to be a good and effective leader. So in 2018, I joined a club called um, Malaysia Summit Club during my foundation studies in UITM Tengkil uh, as the vice president. Right. So I started to join Manetics in 2019 as one of uh, the committee members. We had some interviews to join the committees. And in early 20, uh, 2020, which is in my second semester, I was appointed as the leader of um, Manetics Entrepreneurship at School. In third semester, I was given a trust as the vice president, and now uh, I am the president of Manetics for the last semester and the incoming fifth semester. All right, um, moving on to next to the next slide. So, what is Manetics? What does our organization do? Okay, our organization uh, full name is um, Management Man Man Management Mathematics Association. We are a club for a Bachelor of Man Management Mathematics. So our purpose for, of this organization is to provide help for our students in any aspects, such as their welfare, uh, academically, and to create bonds within all of the students. So our vision is membentuk um, mahasiswa cakna bagi memacu kemanduran dinamik. While our mission is um, menjadikan kelab persatuan menetik sebagai sebuah platform pembangunan mahasiswa progresif bagi melahirkan mahasiswa kelas pertama. Um, we living with our slogan, which is everything counted. Okay, continue to what does our organization do? Even though we are a mathematics club. We are not only focused in academics, as you guys can, as you guys can see, we had uh, planned a lot of programs for the income semester. First, there is a um, final year project video workshop to guide our students um, in video presenting editing. 
we also have a few Islamic program, which is uh, Charge Your Soul, while um, CS248, which is uh, our, uh, our program code, um, to, uh, CS248, Hello Future, uh, the program is to help our student um, a quick preview of their potential uh, future career after career, sorry, after graduating. Medlympics um, is a mathematics quiz contest. We had run this program since last three semesters. Um, the participant, sorry, the participation is really overwhelming by our students. Lastly, we also had some motivational program so that our students stay focused and always in a great condition. So basically, that is what we do. Um, can we proceed to the next slide? All right. Uh, Next, I will explain a little bit of uh, our organization structure in UITM. Um, so basically, as you guys can see in the slide, our organization usually will be guided um, by a club advisor. Mostly the advisors are the lecturers of, uh, for, uh, in our campus. They will help us uh, with advices and ideas of anything um, regarding our program and clubs. Okay, next, uh, there is president. They are responsible for setting and monitoring the goals of the club, running club meetings, appointing um, committee chairs, delegating tasks as necessary, uh, recruiting, training and retaining members and maintaining regular communication with um, club members. Um, they will be helped by the vice president. There is two pre vice presidents here. Uh, there is a big difference between um, bits and magnetics, which is um, in magnetics, we only have a one vice president while bits have two vice presidents. Okay, moving on. There is two secretary and treasurer. Secretary is uh, generally responsible for the uh, admi administration of the club, arranging meetings, as well as taking and circulating the minutes and dealings with any administration regarding the club's con constitutions, um, such as uh, documentation and also um, official letters uh, needed for our club. While um, for treasurer, uh, they often serve as the advisors, uh, advisor of the club um, on financial matters, including setting a club budget the treasurer is also responsible for collecting all funds due to a uh, club and for keeping the records of membership fees and dues. Okay, we have next in line, there is a few escorts, exco or departments. First, uh, pub publicity exco is in charge of uh, promoting the clubs as well as their activities. Multimedia exco will help in aspects of any media needs of the clubs, such as they will do some uh, like posters, logo, clubs, videos, and many more. Next, there is uh, academics at school. They will help and guide students with everything regarding academics. Um, they will also share academics information to the students, such as the um, important dates for, for UITM academic uh, system, course registration, a um, uh, uh, lot more uh, information that, that they will share. Next, we have our welfare at school. So welfare at school is um, in charge of uh, students' uh, well-being. They usually will collect um, information from students so that they can identify students that needed help, especially um, financially for their student, uh, their studies. So last but not least, there is um, entrepreneurship at school. So entrepreneurship at school aims uh, to provide a conduit by which students can access um, relevant entrepreneurial 
uh, resources, network with prominent community uh, entrepreneurs and share uh, ideas uh, for the entrepreneurship. To this uh, end, the club is dedicated to furthering understanding um, about new or small businesses and about entrepreneurship in all business uh, to the students. Um, actually, we magnetics uh, have more departments such as um, spiritual, uh, spiritual departments, sports and recreations, um, corporate and international relations, uh, and corporate and international international relations. So basically, um, that is uh, for our organization structure. Um, hoping that you guys get anything that uh, needed for your understanding. I'll uh, thank you, and I will pass back the attention to the MC. Thank you so much, Muhammad Nur Hidayat, for a pleasant talk. Okay, now I would like to give you guys a friendly reminder to the exclusive 100 participants who will be taking part for the virtual treasure hunt that will be held tomorrow. To set their Zoom name as game name, underscore group number, underscore name. That is shown on the slide for the virtual treasure hunt tomorrow at 12.45 p.m. Indonesian time and 1.45 p.m. Malaysian time. Please take note to participants who will be taking part in the treasure hunt event. Okay, another friendly reminder to all participants for leadership group presentation. All participants are required to do a slide presentation, which will be presented tomorrow at 2.05 p.m. Indonesian time and 3.05 p.m. Malaysian time. Participants also need to set your leadership slide presentation name with group number underscore organization name as shown on the slide. On the other hand, in your slide presentation, you need to include organization name, logo, vision and mission, organization structure, and also interesting program to be done in your organization. The three presidents will be picking randomly some groups to present in the leadership group presentation session. I hope all participants took note on all the reminders that I just said just now. Thank you. Okay, now, feel free to ask anything regarding this program or or for tomorrow event as we are open for Q&A session. You can raise your hand and turn on your mic to ask the question after being called. Okay guys, do you have any questions? All right. Okay. If it's clear. I guess it's clear already. Okay, for the participants, I would like to remind you again to fill in the Google form or use the barcode link that has just been sent in a Zoom chat and you guys have to fill it in order to get the certificates for today's event. Please do fill it as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, yes, Nina. Uh, okay, uh, for the group presentations, uh, is there any specification for the organizations? I mean, uh, is it for or student organi organizations? 
Is there any specification or just general organization? Do you guys get it? Okay, yeah, I think that's the question. Okay. Um, maybe Halim, Mas Halim would like to answer that first question. Okay, uh, I would like to uh, send the question to Arya or maybe Tim Achara to answer the question. Time is yours. Okay, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, you can make, uh, there is no, uh, not, nothing, not specific them for the organization. So it's free for you to make any kind of organization. Just uh, discuss with your group. Thank you. Thank you. Is that clear? Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, since that question is done, maybe Risky, are you? Oh, well, thanks for the chance. I want to ask if, if it's okay to use startup atmosphere for the organization structure. And uh, and I also has another I also have another question, which is for the programs of the organization. Um, is it uh, do we have to do the actual program or we, or is it just an idea? Thanks. Yes, maybe Arya would like to answer that question. Thank you. Okay, uh, as I said before, uh, there is no limitation for the organization. So it's okay. Uh, it just, you need to, it just, uh, what you discuss with your friend in group. So it's up to you what you want to make uh, organization. Okay, uh, and for the, yes, it is only some idea from your organization. So it's not real activity. Okay, that's it. Is that clear, Risky? Yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I guess that ends the Q&A session. Thank you. All right. Um, we would like to thank everyone for your participation, especially the guests of honor, also uh, who are also attended with us today. Okay, before we end our session, I would like to invite all participants to open your camera for the second photo session. Can you please turn on your camera? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Another one. One, two, three. Okay, that's all for me. Any shortcomings, please forgive. All cooperation is greatly appreciated. Hopefully we we'll meet again tomorrow at 12.45 p.m. Indonesian time and 1.45 p.m. Malaysian time. We adjourned our program with Tasbih Kafara and Surah al Az. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining this session. You guys may leave. Thank you.
Thank you everyone. Bye bye.